So this skeleton was excavated in 1926 by William Cobbin. He was displayed at the original Russian Abbey Museum as King Olaf II. But we have done all different types of analysis to learn much more about him and what happened during his life. So first of all, we can tell he's a male skeleton by looking at different muscle attachment sites. So these are the mastoid processes and these sit just behind your ears. These are very prominent in men because men tend to have larger muscles than women. Moving down, the big indicator of biological sex is the pelvis. So women naturally have a wider pelvis due to childbirth. And when you look at the different features of this pelvis, it's much more narrower and this would indicate that this individual is male. If you can measure his long bones, so his femur, his tibia, you can calculate a rough stature estimation, which is about 164 centimeters, which is around five foot five. However, this needs to be interpreted with a little bit of caution because he has an extra lumbar vertebrae. So normally you would have five, but he has six. And this is what we call a non-metric trait. So it's a non-measurable trait, but it is something that does appear naturally within the skeleton. He was buried with a range of um, buckles across his waist. And this is what's caused this type of staining to appear on the bone. And it was a copper alloy buckle that's caused this type of staining. So he has a range of damage to his spine, which you can just see here. And you should have processes that come out of the side. And this is where your ribs would attach to form your rib cage. But all of these have been damaged and this is evidence of contact with a bladed weapon, possibly a sword or a dagger, but some form of blade has removed all of these and caused damage to the skeleton. He then has another area of damage, which is just here. So just top of, of the hip bone, and it's where the blade has come in from the back and it's penetrated through and caused a little bit of what we call beveling, which is this area around here. And you can see that more fragments have broken off on what we would call the anterior side, and this shows us the direction that the weapon has come. We also know that the blow was quite heavy and it came with a lot of force because it's caused two radiating fractures to come away from the lesion. So through looking at his skeleton, we know that he was mid thirties when he died. He was very active, very muscular. And we then took a sample of bone from this break that happened in the burial environment here and we had it sent for radiocarbon dating and this produced a date of between 1280 to 1420 which is much later than King Olaf II who died in 1237 AD of old age and was buried at Russian Abbey. So these are not the remains of King Olaf but based on where they were buried in the Abbey which was just after the nave they are the remains of a high status individual who died of trauma during the medieval period.